this the start of a of a rotation which some might call healthy at this point guy could be uh, you know and Tim has correctly pointed out that as the semis go the market's going to go so let's try to drill down there quickly Nvidia on Friday massive reversal we talked about it on the show traded two times ish two and a half times normal volume huge rotation lower 230 billion dollars of market cap taken uh, off in a single day is significant when there are probably only 50 or so companies that big in the first place. So yes, technically you have to pay attention. Taiwan Semi, the next biggest holding in, in the SMH, huge double top. Pull up a chart and you'll see that as clear as day. So that's now close to 32 percent of that ETF. If you believe in technicals and if you believe that Friday was a day, it stands to reason that the SMH is probably going to reverse and look at levels for prior highs of 160 or so. If that's in fact the case, almost by definition, the broader market has to follow. You know, it's funny. There's been a lot of analogs. We've heard them all um, about how this period reminds us of, you know, 2000 and, and, and really some of the speculative sort of buying we saw there. And we see all the differences about the companies that are kind of leading the way here. And we could go on and on about them. Um, you know, when I listen to Lisa Sue just now on the network, I mean, talk about and Guy has said it probably 100 times over the last, you know, five or so years. This is one of the best CEOs that exists on the planet. Like just the, the sort of the soberness when things are really good, the soberness when things are bad, you know, how she She's laid out kind of where the company's going, how they fit within their industry, how they're competing, where they are, you know what I mean, on the edge of some of these new technologies. And so you listen to her and you say to yourself, you know, I kind of like I like that stewardship, you know, stewardship. I also could say the same thing about Jensen Wang, but the problem is that that stock has gained a trillion dollars in market cap in two months. And that gets me back to that bubble conversation. In all of our careers, we've never seen such a thing happen. Even for a company that's amazingly profitable, that trades at a reasonable valuation, that is leading all of its peers and that sort of thing. And so those sorts of push and pulls are the thing that we're going to see play out in the market right now. So when you talk about the reversal that we had on Friday, that is an emotional thing. A lot of investors, a lot of traders, they kind of piled on that. And I was surprised that we didn't have more of a follow through today, that we didn't see NVIDIA down, you know, 5% or something like that. So there's still dip buyers in these sorts of names, you know, that taking some of the froth out, you know, no matter how bullish you are for whatever time period, whether it's another week or a year or 10 years, that would be a good thing because we all know this when you have these sorts of bubbles, again, bubble doesn't mean it's about to pop or a really negative thing. You know, it just, it's not a great foundation to build an investment. Thesis also, in my just, for, just for clarity, is AMD yeah. also in a bubble? Or is well, NVIDIA I, in a bubble because of the gain listen, in, in market cap in the past? Because if you look at a forward PE basis, yeah. NVIDIA is actually cheaper. Yeah, yeah. but see, to me, bubble really speaks about sentiment. It speaks about risk versus reward. It feels like what, what you want in the near term versus the long term. And Guy mentioned this. We were on the desk on January 31st in Miami, the day that the AMD reported earnings. It was not a great quarter. It was not a great guide. The stock was down. How much has that stock rallied in the last month and a half on the heels of everything else that's been going on in the sector? So that, to me, speaks of a bubble environment. 